Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In Research Methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Hello and welcome to our lesson today which is a continuation of our APA 7th edition guidelines. We are now in lesson 76, having looked at the major differences between APA 6th and 7th edition in lesson 74. And then the last lesson, we have looked at how to cite books and journals, that is lesson 75. Today, we are going to look at how to format academic papers. For anyone who is in academia, you know there is this saying that you either publish or you perish. So how do you format uh, academic papers that we present or we forward to journals for publishing as per the APA 7th edition guideline? So that is what we are going to go through today. And we shall be looking at the key areas that are required and the areas that are optional. So we have one objective in our lesson today, which is to format our academic papers as per the APA 7th edition guidelines. When we talk about academic papers or professional essays, these are the manuscripts that researchers or others will forward to reputable journals for publication. And when we are forwarding or we are writing the academic papers, then they need to conform to the APA 7th edition guidelines. And we said in our previous lessons that APA dictates how in-text citation and the reference list should be done. And APA, unlike other styles of references, uses other date style. This is where, as you reference, you need to use the author's name starting with the surname and then the year of publication, which must appear in the in-text and also in the reference list. So let's first look at the general guidelines as we format our papers. Number one is the margins. Set margins to one inch on all sides and one inch is about 2.54. And remember, the APA format guidelines should be applied across the whole or throughout the whole paper. The second uh, 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 guideline is that you need to double space all text. And double spacing is inclusive of the abstract. So you need to, uh, to double space all text. The other common one is ident the first line of every paragraph. And by identing, it means it should be indented 0 0.5 inches or 1.5. Uh, two seven centimeters and this is except in the abstract and you'll we'll be looking at an example The other general format is that you should use an accessible font and font style in lesson 74 we discussed the font size and the font style that are uh, applicable when you are using APA 7th edition uh, guidelines the other one is that the paper should have a header and the header should have the running head of the title which should be capitalized and also the page number of uh, on every page. So the header should have the running head and then you should also have the page numbers that are appearing on every uh, page. And then lastly is the levels of headings. We may use up to level 5, but it would be ideal to use level 1 and 2. 
when we use level 3 and to, uh, uh, to 5, these are added to improve readability. So we can use from level 1 to 5, but if we are able to use level 1 and 2, it is still applicable. So let's look at the areas that are key and must appear in your paper. The first one is the title page. The title page should contain the title of the paper or the title of the essay and should not be more than 50 characters. The title should be positioned in the upper middle of the page, three or four lines below the top of the page. It should have the author or the author's names. It should have the name of the university or the institution or the organization where the, where the author worked or studied when the research was conducted or when the paper was written. And then the author's note. Now, others not provide any additional information regarding the author. And this information may include funding for the work, the corresponding order, the current workplace of the author, if it is different from when the work was written. The other thing that should be in the title page is a header with the title of the essay, and this can be shortened. It can be a shortened version of the title, and of course, we should have the title page. Note that as per APA 7th edition guidelines, only the title of the paper should be bolded. The rest of the information should not be bolded. And we have an example which has got a running head. This paper or this page comes from a paper that we wrote uh, uh, on the search for understanding of mixed method research among graduate students, a case of learners in the School of Continuing and Distance Education, University of Nairobi. So you can have a running head, uh, head for that, which is shortened, and I have shortened it to be mixed method research. So you can see the title page has got the title, which is bolded and centered, and we have said that it should be three or four uh, lines below the top of the page. It has the others. You may eliminate the word by, and you just have the others. So the, we were two of us. Then the affiliation, who, where we are working, or where we were working when we wrote the paper, and then the note. And the note, there is change of affiliation of one of the author. And then there is also disclosure that there was no funding and then there was correspondence in case you need to write to the others whom should you write to. So that is what should appear in the title page of an academic paper. Then we come to the abstract. This again is a must. An abstract is a summary of your work and should be between 150 to 250 words. The abstract should also have keywords which should be listed after the abstract and this should be indented. The word keywords should be italicized and we are going to see an example. Please note that the abstract should be a single paragraph. It should not be italicized nor should it be single spaced. It should be double spaced just like the main document. However, the first paragraph in the abstract is not indented and we have an example so again this is this from the same paper showing a different running head so we have shortened it to the search for understanding of mmr among graduate students and note that the running head is not centered it is aligned left and then the word abstract which should be centered and bolded it can be capitalized or not capitalized, then the first sentence in the paragraph should not be indented in the abstract. And then when you come to the keywords, the word keywords should be italicized and then you indent the word keyword. Then you separate the words, this is the keywords with a comma and do not capitalize the first letter and let unless it is a proper noun. Then we now come to the main body. So the body which again is required should have an introduction. And like the other APA editions, the introduction of the paper should be the complete title of the work. And you should 
uh, the title should be centered and you should not add another introduction for your first heading because it is assumed that the beginning of the paper that is the title of the paper is your introduction then with the headings we have said you can use up to heading uh, five but if you're able to restrict yourself to one and two then that will be okay so we will look at the headings and what they mean now level one which should be bolded and centered represent the main topics of your work and in a paper it in includes literature review methodology results and discussions conclusions and recommendations level two represents a theme at a level one this should not be centered but it should be aligned left Level three breaks the main theme into sub themes. And with level three, it should be flush, bolded, and italicized. Then level four and five, if it is very necessary to have them, note that level four should be indented and not italicized, while level five is indented and italicized. And that is what this example shows. So this is the first uh, 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 the page of the introduction. So we have said you do not need to have an introduction. The title, which should be bolded and centered, serves as the introduction. And it should be written in full. So once you write it in full, then you continue now the paragraph that introduces your paper without writing the word introduction. And the first paragraph should be indented like you, ca you can see. And then once you have finished with the introduction, you now come to level one, which are the main sections like we have mentioned earlier. For instance, from the introduction, you'd move to literature review. This is centered and bolded. If there is a theme uh, 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 at the literature review, which is now comes to level two, level two is bolded, but it is not centered. It is aligned left. Then if you have a theme under the level two, then it again not centered, but it will be italicized. Then level four and five, we have said they are flush. Level four is not italicized, while level five is italicized. Then we look at how you use numbers, number conventions in the paper. We start with when to use the numerals and when to use the words. You use numerals when describing numbers that are above 10, 10 and above. For instance, you want to talk about 17 students were used in this study. So you will use 1, 7. You also use numerals when you are talking about numbers that are above and below 10 grouped for comparison. For instance, 5 of the 15 responses. So you don't write the word 5 and 15. So when they are grouped together, you use numerals. <clears throat> you also use numerals when representing time, dates, and age. For instance, 5 years ago, 3 hours and 15 minutes, 15 years, you do not write in, in words. And then when denoting a specific place in a series or books or table. For instance, you want to refer to table 5, group 7, page 12, you use numerals. Now, you use words when describing numbers that are below 10, and in most cases, not representing precise measurement. Anything below 10, if you want to talk about 7 students, then you use 7. You write the word 7. 6 books, 9 pencils, then you write the word 9. You also use words when uh, the number is at the beginning of a sentence or a title or a heading. For instance, the first the sentence begins with 45% off. So you cannot start with the numeral 45, 45. You, you write the word 45% responded or 45% off and then you continue. Seriation and lists. When do you use numbering and when do you use bullets? Are both allowed? Yes, you can use numbering, whether Arabic or Roman, and you can also use bullets. You use bullets when you do not want the reader to have the connotation of hierarchy. Numbers are followed by a period and uh, do not appear in parentheses. And we are going to look at an example in our next lesson. Then we go to references. Again, this is a requirement. 
This is a listing of all the sources that you have used in the paper or the work and should follow the guidelines that we have discussed in lesson 74 and lesson 75. The heading references is level 1. So it should be bolded, capitalized and centered. The entries are double spaced and the second and subsequent lines are indented. But be, for one reference, you can use single spacing. But between a reference and the other, it should be double spaced. And that is the example that we have. Then we have optional sections like footnotes, tables and figures, and then appendices. And we shall be discussing this again further in our next lesson. And this brings us to the end of our lesson where we have looked at how to format an academic paper. Our next lessons are going to focus on how we format theses, dissertations, and projects as per the APA 7th edition guidelines. Do not forget to like and share this lesson with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel. And please, if you have any question, put it in the comment section. Thank you.